Hello and welcome to another episode of Parent Quick Smarts. This episode will cover Grade 5 using line plots in real world problem solving. When you think of data that you graphed and displayed in elementary school, what comes to mind? Bar graphs of your classmates' favorite fruits or sports? Line graphs tracking the temperature changes? Our students in fifth grade will still use these great tools for displaying data, but they will also be presented with another tool for displaying data, the line plot. In fifth grade, your child will be expected to use line plots with fractional increments, as well as use multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction to analyze the data displayed in line plots and solve real-world problems. The first thing that we would want students to understand about a line plot is how it could be used to display and analyze data. A line plot is a simple graph used to display the frequency or how often data occurs along a number line, such as for experiments or surveys. Your child could be introduced to this tool in their classroom by being asked to create a line plot to display data in a real world scenario, such as ordering sandwiches for a picnic. For example, the following are the number of sandwiches ordered by each person at a picnic. Sam wants one whole sandwich. Judy only wants a half of a sandwich. Beatrice would like two sandwiches. The twins, Sharon and Dante, each would like a half of a sandwich. Don is not hungry and does not want a sandwich at all. Sharon wants half of a sandwich. Angel would like two and one-half sandwiches, and Melissa would like one whole sandwich. Now, how could we use the number line below to display this data and create a line plot? We might first organize the data from least to greatest, because a line plot uses a number line to display the frequency or how often each value occurs. And since a number line labels their values in numerical order, this strategy could help us to more efficiently record our data on our line plot. Next, we need to label our line plot. Students should identify an increment for our number line. And since the smallest unit that we have in our data is one half of a sandwich, it would make sense to label the increments using halves. For example, zero halves, then we go to one half, two halves, three halves, four halves, and end with five halves on our number line. Though it might make more sense to convert these, uh, mix, these fractions greater than one to mixed numbers, which would make more sense in the context of this problem. And of course, we need a label to show what those numbers represent on our number line. These numbers are showing the number of sandwiches ordered by people at the picnic. Typically, Line plots use an X to show each time that one of the values on our number line occurs in the data. Each X will represent one person at our picnic. It is important that fifth grade students understand and can explain what both the X's and the values on the number line represent. Using label not only helps the reader, but the creator of the line plot to make sense of the data. Next, we can add X's to show how many people ordered each amount of sandwich. There was one person who ordered zero sandwiches. Four people ordered one half of a sandwich. Two people ordered one whole sandwich. One person ordered two sandwiches. And one person ordered two and one half sandwiches. Once the line plot is created, a student could be asked, what information could you get from this line plot? Or what questions does it answer? A student could see that from this line plot, there are nine X's. So nine, peoples were, nine people were surveyed. So students will sometimes overlook the X on the zero because they think a zero represents nothing. But it is important because it tells us that one person ordered zero or no sandwiches, and that person was part of the survey. They could also see 
that most all of the people, most of the people wanted half of a sandwich because four people, which was more than any other value, ordered half. However, in this scenario, the students were asked how many total sandwiches would be needed for the picnic. They could merely add all of the values, one zero, four halves, two holes, one two, and one two and a half, and the total would be eight and a half sandwiches that are needed for all of the orders. Your child's teacher might next build on their understanding of line plots by giving them a situation in which they could have to perform more than one step or operation in order to solve the problem. For example, let's look at Sean's dilemma as he gets ready for track season. Sean is training for track season. He has been running sprints. His goal is to run a total of three miles. He wants to know how many times he needs to complete his individualized sprint workout to meet his goal. Sean tracked his sprints on the line plot below. In this problem, Sean's line plot has already been created for us. He is using an increment of eighths of a mile. And each of the X's will represent an individual sprint that he does. I can easily see that he does two one-eighth mile sprints and two two-eighth mile sprints in each workout by counting the X's atop each of the values one-eighth and two-eighths. But the question Sean wants to know is, how many times would he have to complete his workout in order to meet his goal of three miles? Well, I would first need to find out how much he runs in his entire workout by adding up all of the sprints recorded. Well, there are two one-eighth mile sprints and two that are two-eighths of a mile. And if I add all of these eighths up, one-eighth and one-eighth, and then two-eighths and two-eighths, I get a total of six of those eighths. So each of his workouts, he runs six-eighths of a mile or I could simplify that to three-fourths of a mile each workout. So if he runs three-fourths of a mile each of his workouts, I next need to find out how many of these three-fourth mile workouts he would need to complete or that it would take in order to reach his three-mile goal. A student might use a model to help explain their thinking. If I use each of these circles to represent a whole mile, and then I split them into fourths, since I want to know how many groups of three-fourths I need to run three miles, I see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve fourths in three whole miles. And if I split those twelve fourths into groups of three fourths, I could see that it would take four groups of three fourths to give me twelve fourths to make that full three miles. So he would have to run his workout of three fourths four full times in order to meet his goal of three miles. Now that you and your child have an understanding of line plots and how to use them in problem solving, you could use some of the following questions with your child on their homework involving line plots, such as asking them, what information does a line plot show? How do you know what each of the X's on your line plot represents? And what question could this line plot help you answer? Take some time out to build line plots with your child at home. Track the frequency of minutes spent studying or practicing throughout the week with a line plot, 
or the frequency of scores on graded materials that come home. Create a line plot and track how frequently they spend a number of hours watching TV over a month. This has been another episode of Parent Quick Smarts. Remember, the best way to help your child is to keep in communication with your child's teacher. Check out the websites www.thinkcentral.com and elementarymath.mysdhc.org. See you next episode.